right, welcome to Puzzler's Paradise. Um, Karen's favorite class because it reminds her of Gangster's Paradise, right? She won the UIL Chess Puzzlers. So there you go. Okay, and for some reason Karen is puzzled. All right, so last week the puzzles were too hard and people left crying and I heard you were crying at home. Are you still crying or it was good? Okay, perfect. Um, so they'll be slightly easier this time, but only slightly. Just slightly, just slightly. Okay, so let's go to the, let's go to the tape. Okay, this is actually a game, I think. It's not a puzzle, it's actually happened. Okay, I like that. Um, in fact, I think about half the puzzles today were actual games. I didn't just make them up. I just saw this on Facebook and gave up during some of the chess.com site. Nice, well that's good. Okay, and, and, and you still don't know the answer? No. I, I, I gave up. Only Ken West, that's Grandmaster Ken West. Only Ken West, and I've looked at this before, but I still don't know what the, well, now you're going to learn what the answer is. Okay, so this is white to play, and I was just giving a long lesson to a very strong student, and I explained to this student that a lot of being good at chess is figuring out what your opponent wants to do, okay? And then my opponents don't do that, so I do whatever I want. Okay, for example, I wanted to get this thing from Starbucks. I wanted to teach a class and get paid, but the chess club didn't know that, so I got everything. Okay, now, this position, white wants to play queen g7 mate with advantage. Let's pretend white makes the obvious move, queen f6, threatening queen g7 mate. Then black will play, queen to f8. even Ken West got it. Okay, but if black couldn't play queen to f8, then queen f6 would be good. Okay, and I put all the puzzles on engines so you're not tricked, because what happens a lot is, some grandmaster, highfalutin, thinks he's tall and good looking like Eric Hansen, just walks in, shows the puzzle, turns out there's seven answers and his answer's wrong. That's never happened to him, but it could in my imaginary world. So what I do is I engine check all the puzzles and make sure the answer is correct and there's not seven answers. Now in this puzzle, which I learned about, which I think was a game actually, uh, the move that's correct is something like plus eight, that would be winning, and every other move was like plus 0.1. So I was like, okay, this only has one answer. Now, if your opponent wants to refute queen f6 with queen f8, even Ken West knows the answer now. You just said queen f8, so stop queen f8. I know. You, you can stop it. You can do it. You can go to the board and physically hold the queen. Orlando, what do you think? If I avoid queen f8? Yeah, if you don't play queen f8, queen f6 is good. Trying to obstruct. Mm -hmm. You've tried to obstruct your whole life. I know about you. Oh, Wait, Ken West sees it? What, what world am I in? Yes, sir? Rook to uh, C5. Is he right? They're like, Ken West said it, so I don't know. The cameraman likes it. It's not even Ben Simon. That's why you can't hear me. Okay, so the correct answer is, unfortunately, Ken West is right. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Rook C5. Yeah. Now, queen f8 is difficult to play. You could do it, but you have to be a grandmaster like me. <laughs> now, white's gonna do some of this stuff. And black has a lot of good defenses, like resigning. <laughs> but you don't have to believe me, you can tell me what you would play with black. Yeah, the truth hurts. So, when your opponent has a good move, it might be a good idea to, pre to prevent it. It was so easy, why didn't you solve it before? Rook c5 was the only move you thought of. You said obstruction. I went, oh. Well, actually, he did. Uh, yeah. Like, ah. yeah. You know who else said obstruction? Uh. It's, a, it's a Trump joke, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, the computer says something like plus eight, which means it's not mate, but white's going to, yeah. I'm guessing, like, in my imaginary world, if I play queen f6 here, because black doesn't get to move, that black has to play king f8. And then I would play rook c7, like I would. Because that stops king e7. And then, I don't know, it looks like everything's mate. So I'm not sure why the computer doesn't announce mate here. Oh, I know, I know why. King h8? No, no, I know. King h8? And then rook to... to uh, king h8? And then rook to king h8? <laughs> yeah, and then rook to g8. After That's the Ken West we know and love. You don't get... You, you don't get <coughs> When you play king h8 and rook g, and I don't move, queen f6 is mate. That's the Ken West we love. Hopefully you picked that up. Okay, so, all right. But I think if I take this rook 
and then you can never meet me. So you'll just be up a queen for a rook. That sounds like about plus eight. Yeah. Okay, so rook c5 winning, no other move wins, and I believe it was played in the game. Okay. And then the next puzzle. This is also a game. Man, I like when the puzzles are games. Okay, this is white to play, and Ken West should solve this because white is down a piece, so Ken West is at home. He's like, down a piece, I win those all the time. So what I did was I looked at about 100 puzzles today, and the ones that I couldn't solve in one second, those are the ones you're doing. If I solved them in one second, I didn't, I, nah. And there was one I actually couldn't solve, and I was like, that'll show them. Okay. I solved this one, but it actually took me a while. It might have taken me like 12 seconds. I think Orlando's quicker than me. Hmm. Queen h3 with two threats. Mate, wah, right? And queen takes rook's also good. Although, to be honest with you, stopping queen h7 mate's tough. I only see one way to do it. I guess they don't. I don't Take, the rook Take the rook. Yeah, otherwise, queen h7 mate's pretty good. Which also defends the rook. It stops both threats. Pretty good move. And Orlando saw that. Queen h7 check, king goes somewhere, let's say here, and then you win the queen. Ye old skewer. That's what Ken West was thinking. Yeah. And this is sort of a, this puzzle, you better solve it, because if you don't play queen h3, you're down a knight. So it just turns out, because the queen is undefended on b8, and the lesson I just gave to my very high-rated student, I explained to them, you should always be looking at what's defended on the board and what's not, because the things that aren't defended, occasionally you can take them. When you take things that are defended, who cares? You can take back. So the knight is defended a lot, right, by the queen and the rook. And so you want to take the rook and the queen. And I could basically say about any chess position that's ever happened. You want to take the rook and the queen. And queen h3 threatens the rook, and then it turns out the only defense loses the queen because... Of, of where the queen is. That's too bad. Unless you have the white pieces, then it's great. Yeah. And then Ken West fails to win the winning endgame with a right. queen and two pawns for Rook and a knight. No, right. that could happen. Okay, now, this one is special. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you why it's special. About two weeks ago-ish, which for you at home is like four weeks ago, if we're lucky. <clears throat> anyway, um, I didn't see this puzzle, and somebody posted on the internet, oops, our answer is wrong, there's another answer. <laughs> and they posted their other answer, and I posted, I said, that, that answer's no good. So the refutation of the answer was wrong, and the answer they gave was right. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, and these players were very good at chess. They were IMs. And they were like, oh, this one's quicker, sorry. And I'm like, that doesn't win. So the puzzle was fine, and the refutation of the answer was wrong. So I guess chess is hard. This took days to discuss. Okay, so this is white to play and win. White's pawns look pretty good, right? So these positions are usually difficult even for grandmasters, but it's easier for a grandmaster when we're told white to play and win. Then we can do it. If we weren't told that, we'd be like, oh, it's too hard. So white has two ways to win in this end game. One is checkmate, which always wins. And one is to promote a pawn, and your pawn doesn't. You can pause your video at home, even though it's the same as... No, don't do that. You could get a sandwich like our cameraman. Wait, that's a piece of pizza. Yep. From where? From Man, that doesn't sound good. Although I do like QT. It's pretty gross. Yeah? It is it? Yeah. It was better when it was warm. Yeah. That's true. I agree with that. You could heat that up. I could have. Yeah. But that would waste valuable seconds. It's real like we're doing here. All right. So obviously, hey, can they, when they're in, in, in the internet world, and he, can they see this board? It's too. Yeah. What? Like, I, I, just, I just put a board, I put the computer screen board on the video. So, like, they don't see the protector screen at all. Oh, they see this. They don't see, they don't see nothing. Yeah. What about you here? It's funny to hear, but you can see it. You can see it? I mean, I only got the right answer, so I guess so. 
Okay, yeah, usually when I'm teaching like the one o'clock class, you know what I'm talking about? I, I turn all the lights down because I don't, I don't want to see those kids. Okay, so uh, white wants to play like a king all the way up there and queen and mate him. So the first move is relatively obvious. G3. Illegal. I flipped around, that's white on the bottom. You have the right answer. Oh, but, B, what, uh, B3 then. Yeah, but B3 is also illegal. I, I, IT's good. You mean King B3? Yeah. You say King B3. Uh, no, we're adults here. All right, King B3, that's correct. You're moving towards your pawns and you're stopping his advanced pawn. Great. Okay, and black makes a queen. And white plays King C4. Now, Black only has one moose, he doesn't lose all of his pawns. Losing all your pawns is bad. If you're taking notes, write that down. Ken West, he's, a, he's not talking. What's the only move that saves your e pawn? A5. A5, yeah. Now, if you go take the e pawn, you're, it's going to be black to play and win. Yeah, it's too bad. The truth hurts. Luckily, the king moves like a knight, so we can take it. Oh, no, then, then black would play king takes c6. Never mind. Which defends b8. Okay. Now, a5 has a fatal flaw noticed by an eagle-eyed Ken West. Eagle-eyed Ken West. Man, if I make an album, it's going to be called that. Okay. What does a5 do that's bad for black? It's good because you queen, but it gives away something. Something important. B6. If I play king B6, you will not be happy. Because I'm going to mate you next move with C7. And in the starting position, I could never play king B6. However, if I take your pawn, you're also not going to be happy. So you got to do something. Okay. Now, this is the position in question. And the reason I knew they were wrong about their refutation of their own answer was... It happened to me in a tournament game against Miles Ardeman in the World Open about 20 years ago. Miles Ardeman is about 2,500 USCF. Now he's about 2,230 USCF. Yeah, that's what happens when you get older, Karen. Yeah. Okay, so um, he thought he was winning, and he did a very similar thing against me. And when I made this move, he was like, oh, and he was just lost. So it reminded me of their, their refutation. Okay, now... As you all have noticed, eagle-eyed, the king gets to b6 two different ways. And one of them wins and one doesn't. And the people who published the study, they were like, oh, they both win. And the one we didn't say wins quicker. And I said, the one you didn't say doesn't win. And I showed them why. And they went, oh, do they have the computers to check this? But I already knew because I already had this. So one of those moves wins and one doesn't. And you have to calculate your favorite thing to do, right? He stopped eating his pizza because he's calculating. Also, it's gone. No. Remember, what does your opponent want to do? So if you play king b5 and or king c5, and would be good. Your opponent has to stop king b6. They have to. Otherwise, you play king b6. So they're going to play king c7 and or king a7. So now you got to figure that out and then pick which one, king c5 or king b5. We can vote. I'll give you a minute. This isn't going to drink itself. How are you doing at home? Good? You got something to drink? No? We'll okay, get some. They'll take their turn. We have a vote in the back. Pizza Man, what's the answer? I'm pretty sure it's B5, because then if he goes to C7, you go to A6. Okay, and so what about King C5 instead? Like if white plays King C5, what would black do? Then he goes to C7. Everything you said was correct. Everything. You were the most correct. When you play king b5, 
and he plays king c7, you play king a6, and it's over. If you play king c5, he plays king c7, and you can't do anything, right? Okay, so king b5 is correct, okay? And if you play king c5, they thought that, wait, now I'm confused. King d4. King d4 is now. Oh, that's the move I was showing you before. The computer showed me the losing move that I showed you, so it showed me. Okay, hate computers because I'm old. All right. So if you play king c5, then white's threatening this, and you play king c7. For some reason, the internet's people, they only looked at that move. Boo! Then after here, it's over. Like, that was the end of the analysis. So they just, like, forgot about king c5. Yeah, the truth hurts. Or king c7, I should say. Um, okay. So we play king b5 with the sole reason to prevent king c7. Because if king c7, we go here. And then all of you can win, right? Ken West is nodding, so I guess so. Okay. So therefore, black plays... If he doesn't play king c7, he plays king a7, right. Okay. Now, it looks like white's being stupid, because now white plays the move he didn't play last move. King c5. King c5. And you're like, wait a minute. You told me king c5 was wrong. Then you play king b5, king c5. And you're all furious. The reason king c5 was wrong was what you said. Black plays king c7. I don't think black plays king c7 here. So we force black to move away from c7, then we play king c5. Okay, so black makes a queen, because making a queen is good, right? If you retreat, then I queen would check, and you don't queen, mm -hmm. so I win. So you play e2, and since it's a puzzle, you get mated at the end, queen versus queen. And now it's up to you to prefer queen b7 or queen b6. I'm not going to judge you. You're all going to play queen b6, but queen b7 is easier. It's one square instead of two. Mm -hmm. yeah, but all you guys are like queen b6. That's the mate I know. I've never seen another mate with a pawn on a5. Crazy. Yeah. Okay, and then mate for you guys so you can. Yeah. Okay, but in this position, it's key to play king b5. And what's funny is the people who made the puzzle who showed the refutation, they didn't understand their own puzzle. They didn't make the puzzle, they just showed it. The point of king b5 is to force the king to a7, so after king c5, you can't play king c7. But they got so convinced that black would play king a7 in response to king b5, which is correct, that they thought he would also do that here. And then white wins easily, quicker than the other one. And black should play Ken West. What should black play? What should he play? Oh, c7. Yeah, king c7. Yeah. Why is the door open? What, what, what's, what's going on here? Now we're talking. Hey, you didn't bring me any money or drinks? Uh, you should have told me first. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so that was a win for White, but he had to be a little sneaky. And he has to go to the internet and refute everybody. Okay, this is the easiest of all the puzzles. I gave you guys a break. I knew you were showing up, so I made it easier. All right, first of all, I don't know the answer to this question, but I still know the answer. The question is, what opening was this? French? Yeah, it has to be a French. Either a Winnowar or a McCutcheon. Is it a Winnowar or a McCutcheon? Wow, I don't know. I'll never know. Because of the McCutcheon, often black plays c4 and b5 and a5, but not in the Winnow War. It could be a Winnow War. We'll never know, because I don't know where this game's from. Okay, so white's attacking with all pieces. Hooray for white. But black's up a piece. So this should be a Ken West specialty. White's down a piece. So he's in his home territory. Okay, white's to play and win. Nobody tells you you're winning when you're playing in the tournament. So you just lose. Orlando solved it an hour ago. He's never been so proud. Yeah, I didn't want to look at him anymore. He's too happy. Ken West will solve it in an hour. Yeah, I wish he had happened that position in my last year. Yeah, he's like, a, man, you were crushing a Tulia. Come on, man. I dropped a piece. Oh, okay. 
Man, but you were you were playing great. Every move you were like increasing your advantage. Wait, what did I call him? Call my Julian. Okay, Arjun. Did I say Arjun? You said Julian. Yeah, I'm thinking of Atulia Shetty instead of Arjun. I guess I'm Shetty out of luck. I'm like, he wasn't beating Atulia Shetty. Man, that's for sure. I mean, you're a good player. All right. So, anybody but Orlando solve it? Nobody else? Just throw, See, they can't solve it. It's too hard for them. This is called, based on my life and works, overworked. It's an overworked puzzle. Let's see who's texting me. Oh, that's the right answer. Wow. Anyone? Bueller? Uh, I'm about to put the rook around that king. Looks pretty good. It does? Well, Let's see your analysis. <laughs> well, Black has one legal move, right? Yeah. So bishop takes rook. Yeah. Come, you, down, come down to queen check. All right, Black has one legal move. Yeah. Bishop g8. Would, so keep going. Oh, and then, uh, oh, you were done. Well, allow me to retort. <laughs> nah, this is from uh, don't, don't sue me, Pulp Fiction. The ones we look at always have sacrifices. See, you're from Houston. You're from Houston. You say you sacrifice too little. This is a big. We sacrifice big stuff in San Luis. Ken West, tell him the answer. Yeah, I'm kidding. Any, any of you guys? No? Yeah. Yeah. Too easy? What? What's the answer? Queen, uh, what, H6? That's what Ken West was thinking. Yeah, and then you... Then you Queen then you H6 check. Then you made a position, yeah. yeah. but he could block. That's okay. Nah, that's okay. <laughs> he takes the queen, and Ken West is shocked that this is me. He can't even believe it. Yeah, yeah he's like, wait a minute, that's me. Yeah. That's not a real It looks like it was, but I doubt it. Uh, yeah, bishop g is me, but there's a knight on f5, so queen h6. That begs the question, does this win brilliantly but takes longer? I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to say yes. So that was meeting two with queen h6, but this looks like it wins two. That's even cooler, but it doesn't take like an extra move. All the, all the kid problems, they always have a, a, a rook. You could play bishop f7. You could play queen c2 check. What a horrible answer. Yeah. So queen h6 and then bishop g7 mate. Now Ken West will do that his next game. What's You'll have that tactic ready for your next game. Queen h6. Then this won't be mate. You'll be like, what? So one of my good friends, Bob Schifoni, who I co-wrote my Smith War book with, he was playing in Kings Island Open before you were all born. And he played a really long combination to beat a better player. And near the end of the combination, he, he sacked his queen, and then the guy took it. And then he plays a knight fork winning the queen back, and he's up like a couple pieces. And then when the guy took his queen, he said, check. And Schifoni's like, what? So he couldn't play his knight for because he was in check. So his combination didn't work. Yeah. So it worked except it didn't work because he was in check. Yeah. Yeah, imagine like you do this and the guy takes it and says, check. You're like, wait, I want to play bishop g7 me. Yeah. yeah. If the guy does say check, you say check, please. And then, yeah. All right. This one I could not solve. I was very embarrassed. If you're at home, I'm kidding. I solved it. This is a game between two super GMs. Um, I believe Ivan Chukomsky, but I could be wrong. Probably not wrong, though. Pretty right, usually. Uh, white to play. I looked at it for over a minute, and I couldn't solve it. So I was embarrassed. But in my opinion, Komsky wouldn't have played whatever he just played if he had seen it. So I'm in good company. Like, White's winning here, and I think if Komsky had seen it, he wouldn't have allowed this. So that means two of us didn't see it. Yay. You guys are lower rated than us, so you can solve it. Yeah, queen takes bishop. Queen takes bishop leads to mate for black. He hated when I said the for black part. He just he was like, wait, what? Oh no, Ken West is gonna mate me. Bam. 
See my queen going here? Yeah. Yeah. And then there the rook comes over me. Yeah, and then... Oh. Also, when you said the move, I thought you were right. And I was like, there's two answers? I computer these. What? Ken West better than the computer. Then I thought better of myself and I figured it out. Yeah. Wow. I missed the queen on the diagonal. Man. If you play Queen Takes Bishop, you'd be very happy until Rook H2. They'd be like, wait a minute. What's that spite check for? Man, look at Komsky threatening mate. All happy. Yeah, I didn't realize if it's Black's to move, Black plays Rook H2 and wins. No. Yeah. Everybody's winning, but it's White's move. Maybe you need to do Queen E8 at the end. Okay, then what do I play? Yep, otherwise you meet me. Yeah. Then what? Uh, Keep analyzing. You can do it. Yeah, this is all getting on the audio. This is terrible. Oh, you go queen takes one. Ah, Ken West knows all. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's queen e8 check. And the idea is it's a x-ray. Yeah, which is not as good as z-ray. Z is too better than x. So you check... You can't take the queen because rook takes is going to be mate. And after here, the rook is hanging. Man, the truth. And he's not rook h2 mate. He's so lucky, Ivan Chuck. <laughs> yeah, you know what we call him? Ivan Chuck lucky. That's what we call him. No, we don't call him that. Yeah, so he played queen e8. And probably Komsky didn't see queen e8. So when queen e8 was played, he was probably like, oh, man, I'm Komsky. What's going on around here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is really nice queen e8. I didn't see the rook was hanging when I was trying to solve it. I'm not as good as Ken West. Okay, that was a nice puzzle, I thought. Okay, now this one is silly, and I solved it in two seconds, but I like the answer because it's um, like geometric. That's why I solved it quickly. So as you all know, if somehow white gives his knight away for the pawn, even by sacrificing his knight, it's two knights against the king, so it's a draw. So all you have to do is take that pawn. That's all we got to do. And you can attack the pawn every move. I, 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 I have faith in you. So I think this one's harder than the next one. And the next one I couldn't solve. And this one I solved in one second. So I don't know. Probably some brain malfunction. Yeah, you know, I think he says, yeah, like nine, he solved nine, it. Nine Ken West, if you solved it, I, I quit. Huh. Nine, well, I think you said it like, of course. All right, 97 is correct. Uh, he pushes the pawn. Yep. Then you check the king for king and getting the pawn. Uh, Ken West, you cannot check your own king. Oh, gee, Merry Christmas. <laughs> but it was good for the crowd, so. Yeah, and I was waiting to bring my king up here to capture the <laughs> Oh, you were, your king was going to come up and, yeah. yeah. Well... <laughs> Now you know why we call him Grandmaster Ken West. You yeah. thought I was funny. Yeah. That's what, what's in that drink you got? Really? Yeah. All right, but you're still right. That's how good, that's why you're Grandmaster. <laughs> that is the right move, although it's not check. Okay, so Black has one move. You can't let him take the pawn. Mm -hmm. So, like, F3. Keep going. Keep attacking it. Not to uh, E5. Yeah. Okay. One move. Keep attacking it. One, you can do it. G4. Right. Okay, now, if you make a queen, if, then you fork the king and queen. Okay, as you pointed out. But if I have a knight? Right, that's <laughs> right. So you have to make a knight. Wow. Okay, and now, this is the, this is the funniest move of the puzzle. I can do it. <laughs> now, I can't prove that I'm right. Well, I think I can. I think I can prove that I'm right. But I do believe four knights beats a queen. But I don't think it's ever happened. Yeah, well, four knights. Yeah, what move? Uh, That's the hard part. F6. 
Yeah, now you have six. Yeah, it's a fork. Yeah. If he takes your knight either way, it's stalemate. Yeah. I solved that one quickly because I, I saw how cute that was. It had to be right. It had to be this, 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 and then knight, and then it had to be. Yeah. I computered it too. Computer agreed with everything. It was like black swinging. It's like, oh, wait. And then it instantly sees all this. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, stalemate's tough. Always look for a stalemate when you got nothing. Okay, Ken West knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. You think that'd be a problem. All right. And the last one I couldn't solve. And I didn't understand it. And I understand it. Now I feel like an idiot. I mean, I solved it immediately. That's what I meant. <laughs> Looks pretty simple. Now, I was surprised at the answer that there was only one answer. So I engine and yep. So the engine announces mate. And it says all the moves are equal. Man, the computer's tough. These problems would be tough for like 100 years ago. I, I can't check nothing. By following my advice as a chess coach, you could easily solve this. I'm serious. I'll give you the biggest hint ever. It should give you the answer. When you're playing chess, you always want to look for your, what your opponent wants to do. In this position, if you were black and it was your move, what would you do? You only have one move. Check isn't a move. Let's hear some algebraic notation. Um, rook f1. Rook f1 check is the only move. And then if you play like, let's say, king a2, then rook a1 check. Something like that. Or maybe I play rook f8. It could be rook f8. Rook a1 check, king b3. Oh no, rook a1 check, king b3, rook a3 should draw. Should. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think rook f1 check, king a2, rook a1 check draws. Anyway, rook f1 check is the only move. You make any other move, I'm going to win. I guarantee it. I'm going to win your rook like in one move. You see what I'm saying, Ken West? Yes, yeah, so rook to g1. Well, rook to g1's checked. Then I have to play king h7. And then you let me out. I'm out. You're not tying me down like you're tying me down. No tying me down. My wife doesn't allow it. Are you editing that out? No. Ah. Oh. There's children here. Come on. What are you talking about? You're the one saying it. Much. Oh, wait. That's right. How is the whole sequence? Rook f1, king a2. Okay, rook a1. And then white can answer king b3? Rook a3? Uh, you can, you can. Yeah, I'm mean. Yeah, you could ask any of my wives. Any of them. Right? You agree, Ken? I didn't know the first two. Oh, <laughs> terrible. I, I give them the answer, and the, nothing. So you know your boy wants to play rook f1 check, so you stop it. I'll give you a hint. You can stop 25% of it. That's good enough. And you can allow the other 75%. Man, I confused them more by giving them the facts. They didn't want that. No, I really, I asked the Donald about this problem. He said it was very, very, very hard. Yeah. That was the extent of the English language. That he huge. Yeah. No, very, that's the wrong guy. Making fun of the wrong guy here. Now, break down the move rook f1 check into four parts. Rook f1 check. That's four parts. And what's 25% of it? That's 25%. That's the wrong 25%. They're screaming at home. Can't you hear them? They're like, this is the answer. In the future, they're screaming. The 25% you're getting rid of is check. If Rick F1 wasn't check, that wouldn't be a good move. You're playing Rick F1 because it's check. Not because you want to play Rick F1. King A2? Yeah, Ken West knows what I'm talking about. King a2, and now you have to give your rook away. 
because rook f1 is in check, so then I could play anything and win your rook. Rook f7, rook g1. Yeah, now you can't move. You're in Wang Chun. I mean Zugzwan. They're still confused in the audience. You don't have to be confused. You can suggest a move for black. And rook a8. Rook a7 <coughs> check. When's your rook? Uh, he agrees now. Yeah. If you move your rook anywhere, um, I, I put my rook in front of your rook, and you're in check. If you move your rook here, I put my rook next to your rook, and you're in check. The only move you could make was rook f1 check. I can't play rook g1 double check. Well, I could. Especially the 1 o'clock class. That, they'd like that move. <laughs> then it would go rook takes king, bishop takes king. Yeah, okay. But after king a2, black has to move his rook, since his king can't move. And rook g8, which doesn't lose a rook. Oh, that does lose a rook. Yeah. I actually don't have mate here. But I can go rook anywhere here, and you have to block with your rook. And I take with the bishop, or I don't take, and then take with the rook later with check. So yeah, king a2 is the only move that wins. Computer says so. Yeah. And I was like, why is king a2 win? And I'm like, oh, there's no rook f1 check. Black's only move. Rawr. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, why doesn't this win? And then I was like, oh, rook, 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 a, rook f1 check. It's check. So if black doesn't have any checks except th this one, we don't, we don't care about that check as we check it in return. But we can't check when he plays rook f1. We can't check from others that we have to go in front. Yeah. So Ken West was playing king a2 all day. That's why we call him AD. Ken West is known as all day Ken West. Yeah, plays king a2 all day. And let's see who's on the ball. What's this called? What's, what, what would you classify this in a book? What's the, with this kind of puzzle? Yeah, that's what I would, Zook's one. Yeah, King A2, your move. And then you do like the, the bully on Simpsons. Aha. Uh -huh. It's your move, but you don't want to move. Also, white doesn't want to move here. I think every white move allows a check, right? If I move my bishop, there's rook f2 check. In fact, if you play bishop d4, I still play rook f2 check. Because if you take my rook, I take your rook. So every, key, every move that white plays here allows a check, and you want to keep your rook on g7 so you're ready to play some discover check. Yeah? To be careful for stalemate. You gotta watch it. And, yeah. yeah, so King A2, that was tough for me. It was, it was tough for you, but not Ken West. <laughs> He's all day. Yeah. So to solve puzzles and to play in, even in regular chess, when it's not a puzzle, but the answer looks like a puzzle, you always have to see what your opponent wants to do and be ready for that. What most kids do in the kids class, and a lot of adults do in chess camps and such, I show them a puzzle, and they raise their hand, and they ask me if their answer is right. They're like, bishop c3? And I'm like, well, you're not solving it if you're asking me. And when you suggest to move in a puzzle, you have to be giving me some variation. Like, I think my opponent will go here, and this is why I'm winning. But they're just like, is this right? I mean, it could be right, but that doesn't mean that you're right. That's because you said one of the legal moves. If you said, oh, rook f1 check is black's only move, therefore king a2. That's what like a strong grandmaster would say. They wouldn't say, is it king a2? I don't know. And I would be like, no. And they'd be like, all right, I guess he's right. Catherine, if so says, you always have to see it to the end. Yeah. Now, I didn't give one move because I was being nice, but we have some time left. So this is only for Ken West. Bam. Oh, snap. Joining the chess club, $100 a year. Ken West face, priceless. What do you do, Grandmaster? I just move the rook and the rook and the rook Yeah, you move the rook anywhere. Yeah, well, not anywhere. Anywhere except g8 and h7. Yeah, anywhere else is good. Yeah, right. But you don't take that rook, so watch it. Yeah. You agree. All right, that was Puzzler's Paradise. Now you can all go home and listen to Gangster's Paradise and, com and compare, right? And then if you want to, like if you're done with that, then listen to Amish Paradise by... Weird Al. Yeah, there you go. Then Ken wants to do something there. Right, yeah. yeah. All right, so if you're Amish, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.